All right, so today I want to talk about some great tips for getting better productivity out of VS Code. Now, when you start out, you're still figuring out how to write HTML, how to write CSS, how to write JavaScript, remembering the syntax and the proper ways to type things. As you become more experienced, you become better at writing things. But there's something else that happens along the way, and that is that as a more experienced developer, you learn how to use the tools better. VS Code, one of the most popular IDEs for writing uh, code for websites, has a whole bunch of things built into it and a couple of extensions that I'm going to talk about that are going to help you get faster at writing code. So this is the list right here. Now, uh, if you want a copy of this, I've got a code just linked to down in the description with this page, or you can just take a screenshot of this. And these are the things that I'm going to be talking about. These are the keyboard shortcuts. All right, so let's jump in here. Now, first one, moving a line of code up or down. This is something that you'll do in CSS, in HTML, in JavaScript. If I have my code here and I want to move this line. Let's say this Emmet built-in feature thing. I want to put that down to the bottom of the list. Well, my keyboard shortcut is the Alt or the Option key, depending on if you're on Mac or Windows, and then the arrow up or arrow down. So here I am. I've clicked somewhere in this line. I hold down Option, and I can just move this line around throughout my code wherever I want to put it. Simple enough. Up, down. Great tool. Um, Second, duplicating a line. So similar to this, same command, except we will also hold down the shift key. So if I wanted multiple copies of this, now I don't do this a lot in HTML. Uh, sometimes if I'm building a navigation menu or something, I'll do that. But shift, and then we hold down the alt, and then the up or the down arrow allows us to duplicate lines. So I'm going to undo these. So Control Z, or sorry, Command Z on Mac, Control Z on Windows is the undo. Adding extra cursors. Now, this lets you put multiple cursors on multiple lines so you can write on multiple lines at the same time. And it's great if they're lined up like this. So in these list items, if I wanted to put a class name in every one of these, we can do this. So it's Command or Control on Windows with the option and then the arrow up or down, depending on which line you want to move to to put the new cursor on. So command option and then my arrow down. You can see I'm adding a new cursor on every one of these lines. Now if I type, I'm typing on every one of those lines. Just like that. Um, something I don't have on the list here, but I want to expand this. I want to get rid of this side menu. Now you can click on this icon right here, the Explorer to open and close this. The keyboard shortcut for that is Command B or Control B just to toggle this panel so we can open and close it. Just gives us more room to work with. Okay, so we've moved a line, duplicated a line, we've added extra cursors. Selecting the next occurrence. Um, right here. So I've got list item. If I wanted to find the next one, or maybe uh, my code tag here, if I wanted to find the next code tag, if I click on this, next occurrence, command D, we'll find the next one. There we go. Now I've got a cursor in both places. Undo that. You'll notice when I change this, both my tags changed. And this is one of the other things that I want to talk about. It's this auto rename tag. This is an extension that I have installed right here. So I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I'll come back. Auto rename tag allows me to select any tag inside of here. So let's say my H2 tag. Oh, no, I didn't want H2. I meant to do H3. It changes this one and this one doesn't matter which one you select. So if I go to the final one here, oh no, okay, I don't want to do H3. I did mean to have it as H2. I change it here. It automatically changes here. So auto rename tag, great extension by Wanhan. So you can download that through the extension panel here. Live server is another extension. 
that's the one that I'm using that makes my website here come up as if it's running through a web server. So 127.0.0.1, that's localhost, port 5505. This port, I specifically chose which port number to use. And this is something that you can do with any extension. If you create a folder inside your project folder called .vs code, and inside of it, you create a settings.json file, inside of here, you can add settings. Now, every one of these extensions has a page. So if I come in here and I, here's the auto rename tag, if I click on that, here's my page. But through here, there'll be a link for um, the documentation or where you can download it. So change log, this will be the GitHub repo. Here's the repo. Issues is also on the repo. If you go to the full documentation, you will be able to find more details. Then if you come back and you go into your settings file, you'll find that you can actually add more settings. So, you know, here's my extension and here's the settings for that extension. Things like this. It's just a JSON file that you can edit, but you can put settings for all these different things inside of here. And I am using the live server and I've set this as my port number. So whenever I open the page using the live server, so if I close this, I come back over here, I can right click, open with live server, or if I'm in the HTML file, there'll be a link down here in the bottom bar to open it up. If I click again right now, I'll close the server, but this will allow you to open your page in the browser as if it's coming through a web server. And if you're doing anything with fetch, you're going to have to do that through HTTP. All right, so we've got we've talked about the two extensions down here at the bottom. Let's go back up, select next occurrence. That allows us to um, grab another copy. Let me close this. I'll jump over to my JavaScript file. Now this JavaScript doesn't really do anything. It's just here for me to play around with. Um, I can, let's say here, I've got a variable and I've got the same variable name in multiple places in my code. What if I wanted to grab all the copies of variable and rename them at the same time? So next occurrence would give me two things and then three and then four each time I hit it. So if I clicked in here and I said command D, there we go. I've got a cursor on both. But if there was four, five, six, instead of hitting it over and over and over again, we can use the next one. Select all occurrences. So command shift L or control shift L, but command shift L and it will grab all the copies of this variable and I can rename or change what is written there. Maybe in area, command shift L. Well, this was the ID that I was grabbing. In one place I used get element by ID, another place I used query selector, but it's the area that I want to rename. Maybe it's going to be called main but I'm able to rename all of them at the same time. This is actually something that you'll probably see fairly often in tutorials online that are using VS Code is the developer will select all the copies of a variable or all the copies of a tag and rename them all at the same time. This is how they do it. Command Shift L. Okay, so moving on, oops, don't need that. Moving on to the next one, which was code folding right here, code splitting and code folding. The code folding part, that is right here. If you put your mouse over next to the line numbers, whether you're in, whether you're in CSS or HTML or JavaScript, you'll see these little arrows appear and you can fold the code. So you can open and close and open and close the nested ones as well just to shrink things down on the screen so you can really focus on the parts that are important to you. You can do this in CSS, so we can close or fold different styles. In the HTML, if my UL, if that's the thing that I wanted to fold, I can do that. Other times, you want to be able to see your HTML and your CSS or your HTML and your JavaScript side by side to look and work with both of them at the same time. 
and that is this code splitting that we're talking about. And that's this icon right up here. This is the split editor, or split editor right and left. So I click on it. Now, the file that I did have open, I also have it open here. So now I can go between my CSS, my JavaScript, and the HTML, and I can see them side by side and work with them at the same time. Now, if you don't like side by side, depending on the code that you're writing, you can also split it vertically. So if you put your mouse over this, if you're holding the Option key down or the Alt key down, when you go over it, you'll see it does change so you can split it in this direction. And there we go. Now I have my HTML up here, my JavaScript down below. So that is the code splitting and code folding. Now, the only thing that we haven't talked about, uh, oh, there's two things. So the Emmet built-in features and adjusting font sizes. Adjusting font sizes is something that it's not just with VS Code, it's pretty standard. If you're in the browser, if you're in a terminal, if you're in VS Code, adjusting the font size command and then the plus or minus key. So if I hold down plus and I click minus, you can see I'm zooming in and minus I'm zooming out. So plus and minus lets you zoom in the font size. And this is pretty universal. It'll work in most places, most applications. All right, Emmet. Now, this is one that really can save you a lot of time when you are writing your code. Um, let's say I wanted to put another link tag. Now, I can type the word link, and when I hit Enter, it's going to create a link tag for me. Now, there are different kinds of links. You'll notice here when I said link and I hit Enter, it gave me automatically rel equals style sheet and the href and the cursor is inside of here. But there's other types of link tags that I might want. If you say link and then a colon, you will get a list of possible ones. So the favicon, there we go, there's that. What if it's a web manifest file that I'm working with? Well, there is a manifest. We get that as well. So this is one thing with Emmet, you can create these tags. If I wanted to create a whole bunch of tags at the same time. Maybe I'm building some filler content. So in between my header and my main element, if I want to put in a section and then inside of, oops, don't want the angle bracket at the start. We're just writing the word section. And then inside that, I'm going to have four paragraphs. So P asterisk four, it's going to create four. And you can see right below here, it's showing me a preview of what's going to be built. And these vertical lines, the pipe characters, those represent where the cursors are going to be. So if I just did hit enter at this point, I'll be able to type something inside of here, or there is a built-in lorem for lorem ipsum text. Now we can see my preview has a bunch of text filled in. If I hit enter, there we go. My section with my four paragraphs and this. We can now do that thing where we're going to add cursors. So we'll command option and then down arrow. We could add a class after the fact into those paragraphs. And there we go. So those are some things that I use on a very regular basis when I'm building HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. Um, I hope you will take some time to practice because it it doesn't come naturally to always use them until you practice. Once you practice and you see how much faster you become with your coding by using these things, it will become part of your uh, regular practice. All right, so hope that helps you out. That's not <laughs> the only keyboard shortcuts that there are. And if you're ever looking to find them, uh, if you go up into the selection and the edit menus, you will find the keyboard shortcuts listed inside of here as well. So like there is a lot more when it comes to keyboard shortcuts than what I showed here, but these are some of the ones that I commonly use. In fact, if you have one that you use all the time, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below to share with other people what you find useful in terms of keyboard shortcuts. What, what are your favorite keyboard shortcuts? All right, that's everything for now. And as always, thanks for watching.